Hey there, welcome to Matt's Garage. Well today I'm going to be changing the coolant, the thermostat, and the temperature sensor on this 2003 PT Cruiser Turbo. This procedure will be quite similar on a non-turbocharged PT Cruiser as well. So I'm going to go through it here with you step by step and show you everything you need to know for total success. I'm going to show you mainly how to refill the cooling system to avoid getting any air pockets in it because that's mainly where people run into trouble with this job. So first of all the coolant I'm using is Napa Concentrate. This is a universal coolant and uh, it's what I've been using in my Chrysler products for over eight years now. I've never had a, had a cooling system related problem since using it. I always mix it just with uh, regular tap water so that's what I'm going to be doing again today. There's a lot of uh, controversy on what kind of water to mix with your coolant concentrates. Some people will tell you distilled, some tell you deionized, and some swear by tap water. So I guess I'm personally in the tap water group. Basically when you use a distilled or a deionized water, all the minerals, all the irons, everything are stripped from that water. So when you put that water into your cooling system, into your your metal engine which is basically made of minerals it starts to strip those minerals away from the engine to rebuild itself as a uh, as a water as a mineralized water and so that's essentially causing corrosion within your engine now the argument there is that you're mixing it with this coolant concentrate and the additives and stuff in here are counteracting that uh, from happening there, there's anti-corrosives in here and stuff and so people say that once you mix your distilled or deionized water with the concentrate it's safe for use so I mean I'm not gonna make a big stink either way about it I'm just gonna use tap water you guys can do as you please but I just figured I'd touch on that a little bit and of course another option is to just buy premixed coolant and this is just uh, tap water it's not actually spring water, I just, just a bottle as I, I filled it from my tap at home. So I'll be mixing that up and I'll, I'll briefly cover mixing that. And then this is a coolant tester. It's a good idea to test your coolant even if you mix it to specification just to double confirm that it's to specification. Okay, well, we'll jump underneath and show you the drain valve. So the very first step we're going to take here is to take the cap off. And that way when we go to drain out the coolant it won't airlock on us. You can see I've safely got the car blocked up off the ground quite a bit. And it's actually uh, it's angled down on the uh, driver's side just a little bit because the, uh, the drain on the radiator is actually on that side. Okay guys here we are under the left front corner of the PT. You can see this right here. This is actually your drain valve. So you want to turn this counterclockwise to loosen it. Sometimes you can get them with your fingers and sometimes a pair of uh, pliers are required. So once it's loose, just get your drain pan ready because it comes out pretty quick. Now you can just leave the valve a little bit loose like that. And let it drain down a bit because if you take the valve right out it will spray out for like a couple feet that way and you'll end up with a big mess so just uh, go grab a cup of coffee or whatever and let her drain down a bit well the coolant's just finishing draining so we can actually start the job since the coolant's well below the level that we're gonna be working at here so here's my new uh, cap it's a Gates 3152.5 this is my new thermostat 5340 195 and that's a motor rad and then uh, I've got a standard brand temperature sensor and that's a TX98 so I wasn't trying to have all different brand names that's just the way it worked out but these are all pretty good brands anyways the uh, temperature sensor is really hard for me to show but it's right there you can see the plug for it right there and so there's a air conditioning line right in the way here kind of but you can just barely get in there it's been a while since I changed one but it's not as hard as it looks if I remember right 
I think on different years it might be uh, in a different location. Like I think on some of them it was on the front here or something. But I have seen it down here. That's not an uncommon place. But I'm pretty sure I've seen it located on other areas of the thermostat housing here as well. Now you can see it's down to a trickle. So we'll just take this plug right out of here. There's still going to be a bit of a stream coming out. There we go. But if I hadn't awaited it, it would have shot out of there for a couple feet. You can see that's just got a little rubber o-ring on it there, so it doesn't take a lot of tension to get it to seal up. Definitely a little bit of rust in that cooling system. I don't find this orange coolant to be very good. I've encountered this before on our PTs and just uh, changing it out with the universal coolant seems to solve the issue. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to flush, but I, don't. I think it's kind of borderline, so I'll leave it. Okay guys, time to tackle that coolant uh, temperature sensor. Um, here's the new one, and it's got a 19 millimeter hex on it there. You can see it's already got the uh, thread sealant on there and everything good to go so we just got to get the old one out and it's got one of those red lock tabs on the electrical plug so we're going to get down there with a screwdriver slot blade screwdriver and get that lock tab pulled back okay so I got the uh, lock tab slid back and uh, I think I'm actually going to get a little pry bar and then I can depress the tab with the screwdriver and use the pry bar to um, push the connector back off so there's, I got that nice pry bar there, and uh, as long as I can get that in there somewhere. Uh, the problem is when I get both hands and both tools in there, then I can't see anymore. There we go. Pretty easy, actually. The connector slid back. Um, still got to get it all the way off, but it's unclipped now, so. There we go. We've got it totally off. We're just pushing it down out of the way. We're probably going to have to put it back on the same sort of way by using tools and not our hands. Now you could gain some extra access in here by taking this upper motor mount out. I'm going to try and avoid doing that because it looks like I can get down in here with the ratchet and run an extension in. But if you want it to work a bit more comfortably, you could remove that uh, motor mount. So here's what I got, so it's a question of uh, what length I need. I think I'm going to start with the 3 inch extension there and the long socket and I'll see if I can get that on the sensor. Okay, I am on the sensor. I'm on the hex. It looks like I can get my ratchet in there, so this might not be too bad. Okay, now if I can reach down and kind of support my ratchet so that I'm not pressing sideways on that sensor. The problem is I'm just barely reaching it with this setup here. There, I think I broke it loose. Yeah, it's turning. So hopefully it'll loosen up enough that I can spin it out with my fingers using the extension and then spin the new one in the same way. I did make sure it's really clean around the sensor. If it isn't on your car, you can take some brake clean or whatever and uh, just rinse off around the sensor. Yeah, this is loosening up. I'm almost to the point where I can turn it with my hands. These sensors uh, up to 05 were problematic on the PTs. From 01 to 05, they had a uh, habit of uh, developing an internal leak where the coolant would travel into the electrical portion of the sensor and short circuit the sensor. Um, the oil pressure sensors on the PTs suffer from the same issue. So if you've, especially if you got an early PT, 01 to 05, uh, just go ahead and change these sensors as a preventative maintenance. So I think I'm to the point where I can get it by hand. A little bit of mechanic trickery here. I have this little adapter. It adapts it to quarter inch. And what that is going to do is add the half inch that I need to grip that nicely. Also, when I put the new sensor in, I can tighten it down with that. I should have had that on there from the beginning. It makes it just the right length, and I have a quarter inch drive on there, so that works just fine. That thing you heard drop was the sensor. It's out. There it is. So before you get too deep into this, just compare your your plugs and make sure everything matches. Always compare your 
new in your old parts, but that's a dead match. It's going to be a little tricky getting it in there because that one fell out. So what I'm going to do is put some tape in there to, to hold that in there more firmly. Okay, well, we'll just start with a, a little bit here and see how that goes. We're going to want a bit more up in there so that this doesn't slide all the way up in there either. There we go. Perfect. I got her lined up guys. I'm just trying to get it started. Yeah, I do think I got it started. I want to look at it and make sure it's square. Can't really see from the angle I'm at there. No, it's going in nice and squarely. Got it a few more turns by hand here. And then we'll switch to the uh, ratchet. Here we go. Now you do want to make sure you're not putting a lot of sideways pressure on the socket because it could uh, break the plastic part of the sensor off the plug portion. And you don't have to get crazy tight. It's uh, brass and aluminum. It's got uh, thread sealant on it and it's a tapered thread, it's a pipe thread, so you just snug it in there, you don't overdo it. It doesn't lock down, it's not like a bolt or anything where you torque it down till it stops. Now as it gets tighter, I'm just reaching down and holding the socket square with my other hand. Okay, that should be good. Let's just see if the uh, plug is facing up and it doesn't look like it is, so... Uh, that is one thing you want to spin it until the plug's facing up otherwise it's going to be a real pain for the next guy okay guys there was the uh, final step it got uh, a little bit too short with just the adapter on there so i i once it was a little bit tight i got these two three inch extensions on there and it was a, a bit of a chore i had to get it all the way onto the sensor and then get my ratchet on there and there was barely room but once I got that on there, I was able to bog out on the sensor so it wasn't twisting around on it. And I got it uh, extra half a turn so that the, uh, the plugs twist it the right way so you can actually get at it to get it off again if needed. So now I have to try and put the plug back on using only pry bars. First I've got to fish the plug back up. I've got just the tool to fish that wire up. This coat hanger should do the trick once I uh, trim and bend it a little. There we go, my pen pending wire grabber. Got that right up there. Okay guys, you can just barely see the plugs back on there. I got the uh, the safety tab back in place and everything. The new sensor's in place, so all we got to do is leak check that on startup. And other than that, we're done. And of course, make sure your temperature gauge is working properly. If it's jumping around and fluctuating a bunch, uh, it can be a sign of a bad sensor. Okay guys, so on a PT Cruiser, this is your thermostat housing right here. The thermostat is down under that flange there. You can see there's two fasteners. This one has a, a bolt there. It looks like a 13. Um, and I believe it will have a 10 on the inside. Often they just have two 10s. I don't know if this is a turbo thing that they have a, a stud there. Either way, that's pretty simple and straightforward. And uh, it connects up to the hose here, but you don't actually have to disconnect it from the hose. You just have to remove that flange and, uh, and remove this overflow hose. And you'll have room to work it up and get the thermostat out. Here we're going to remove the coolant overflow hose here. There we go. That was a little rough going. Just be careful. This is the fuel line here, so you don't want to get too rough with it. I find it easiest to use a, uh, this is an extendable nut driver and it works really good for this has a drive socket in there in case I need extra force too so we'll get in there and try and get that 10 millimeter out on the back side first because it's a little bit trickier to uh, get to there we go no issues there uh, it might be a little tricky actually retrieving that fastener yeah you're gonna need a magnet here we go, I just got a magnet on the end of this little flashlight here. There we go. Now the front fastener is 13 millimeters. So we'll get that loose too. It's 
good. I didn't need the ratchet for either thing. You shouldn't if they'd been installed correctly, but some people get a little crazy with tightening things. So there's that one. And now you can just lift that hosing up. It's a little bit uh, tricky here, but I didn't think you had to take that hose off. The thing is that clamp's very, very hard to get at with the uh, intake on. I think I'm going to take the clamp off the other end of the hose, and then that'll allow me to pull the whole unit that way, and then I don't have to worry about that clamp in there. Okay, guys, if I just remove the spring clamp here, I can take the hose off and move the whole assembly that way. And that will clear the thermostat housing away from the thermostat. So we'll just get this hose off. Well, there we go. It is tight, but I have uh, successfully made space on the other end there. You can see the thermostat down under there. Um, and this is a little bit tight, but I will be able to lift it up and hold it away. And just, uh, thermostat's kind of stuck in there. There we go. Hey guys, it's not as bad as it looks here, but uh, mainly the fuel line is in the way, so we, we do have to mine that. And we'll just twist that. Okay. You can see now that I've got it twisted out of the way. There we go, there's your old thermostat. Okay, so it is a good idea to uh, get the gasket surface in there nice and clean. It's just a rubber seal, so there's normally no residue, but just give it a good wipe with the shop towel in there. Yeah, there we go. We're going to get the new thermostat in there. So thermostats always go with this uh, facing inward to the engine. The side that has the uh, temperature on it. And that's basically the side that uh, heats up and opens up the uh, thermostat. This one has a little weep valve in it. And what that does is allow the air to escape out of there when you're filling the system. And as you can see, it's got that... Uh, rubber gasket on it and the only thing there is this little tab here corresponds to a little notch in the housing so it's important to find that little notch okay one thing i'm going to do and maybe you could work around doing this but it's pretty easy to do i'm going to disconnect the fuel line so it's just got a little pinch uh, tab on it there we go disconnected the fuel line and that'll give us a little more room just to pull this up. So the fuel line that you just you have to push down on it and then pinch two tabs in, two gray tabs, and then you pull the line up off. So it's a bit of a three-handed job. See now that fuel line's over there, I can twist this up a little more. Okay guys, you can see that's uh positioned right there, and I was able to slip my phone down in there. And get this picture and you can see the notch is right there so that means the notch is just just on the lower side of that bolt hole there and basically if I know where it is I can slip the thermostat up in there and spin it till it fits and then I'm hoping I can twist this all down as a unit and fit it in there now that the fuel lines out of the way and everything it is kind of tight to work in here and uh, I think when I did one of these before, I did take this clamp off. It's not that it's impossible, it's just a real battle. So I'm trying to do it this way, take less stuff off, and uh, see if that works. I'm just trying to make sure that the, everything's as clean as it can be here. So it should be oriented just like that for how I have the fitting. Okay, I'm going to have to set it down in here first and hope that I can get that housing down on it properly. Okay, I've got it down there and oriented right, so we're going to attempt to set the housing down on top of it without disturbing its orientation. Okay, I've got it positioned down and oriented on there, so we're just going to put the bolts in and just walk it down now and make sure it goes down nice and evenly.
I know you guys can't see terribly much, but neither can I. Um, I'm just going to put a little 3-in-1 on these. I normally like to do that anytime a bolt's going into aluminum, just a dab there. And uh, how I've confirmed that the um, notch is lined up is I've twisted the housing and I've looked at the edge of the gasket and the thermostat twist with the housing. So that tells me that that notch is actually locked in. So I'm just going to put the bolts, the fasteners back in here. And we'll kind of walk it down. Just get this one started first. We're going to hold it sort of in place. And then that one on the back side, remember I had to use my little flashlight to grab it. So what we're going to do is just stick it to that. And we'll use the flashlight uh, magnet to get it started here. I can see it's just about lined up perfect anyway. Well, we'll see it started or it will come back out on the magnet. Just make sure that you're tightening this down evenly. So as, start, as soon as that starts to snug down, switch to the other side because that gasket's actually really thick and it has to push up in there quite a bit. And if it's not going down nice and evenly, it's probably because you have the uh, gasket oh, alignment in there. So just uh, take a step back if that's happening. I have actually had to uh, change one of these that was leaking because somebody had installed it wrong and they didn't have the uh, little tab lined up with the notch there. But you can see this one's tightening down nicely. If you've got it all lined up properly, it should suck down fairly easily and meet the aluminum there. But just uh, go back and forth like I'm doing here, a little bit on each one. I'm going to basically torque it up really snug with the nut driver here, like a good reef on the nut driver, and that'll be good. And now I just got to come over here and... Uh, Hook my radiator hose back up over here. Do that spring clamp back up. And now we just have to put our, we had taken this electrical wire up to give us a little more room. So shove that back down. And then our fuel line. And uh, what you have to do, see these uh, square holes in the side of the fuel line there? They uh, line up with corresponding little tabs in this gray clip here. See, there's the clip I'm talking about, and you can see it's got a, a little tab sticking out each side. So you just have to rotate the clip until it lines up with the, the corresponding holes in the fuel line. And then you just push down firmly until it clicks in. And then you just pull up on the fuel line to confirm that. So I'll demonstrate here now that you know what's up with the clip. Okay, so that holes there so you want to rotate that clip see like that and you want to get this on here straight this wires kind of in my way there you can hear that real positive snap and you pull on it and it's well snapped in there it's not going anywhere now, of course you want to leak check that as soon as you start the car first thing you do leak check that Visually inspect on the back side here too and make sure that both clips went in not just the front one Yeah, I can see that one's in and That one's in so very important there. So now we're just going to Hook up the overflow hose again here to the thermostat housing There we go that right there is the uh, bleeder valve right there and it's actually 3 8 so you'll crack that loose when you refill the coolant again. Okay guys, for mixing coolant, uh, normally you just want a 50-50 mixture of coolant and water. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. So uh, here we go. We'll just uh, This jug is actually an old uh, empty one I have. Uh, this is a fresh sealed jug. Just bought today. So we're just going to pour half of it into this empty jug. You can see this is like a gold coolant. It's universal. 
And since all I have is coolant in both jugs, it doesn't matter if I over pour here, I can just pour it straight back into this jug again. So I'll just go back and forth between them until I get it balanced out. Uh, these are hard to see through, but if you just put your finger on them and then look in them, so I'm right there and I want to be right there, so a bit more. And just below the half, I can actually see where it says 2 liters on it. It is marked, they just don't have like a clear indicator strip. Okay, so we've got exactly the same amount in each jug now, so we just got to add tap water. And you don't want to come right to the brim with the tap water, because these jugs are only full up to about here when you get them new. So that's all you want to fill, just the uh, 4 liters in there. And then just to be sure, we're going to test it as well. It should test out to minus 37 Celsius if we've done this correctly. Uh, looks like about half my jug there too, so should be about right. And they're exactly the same level. So this will be enough to fill our complete system. In fact, uh, this car should only take about one and a half. But as I said, we're going to pour a little through to start with just to kind of flush it. So we'll probably end up using both full jugs. Now you just want to stick the caps on, of course, and give them a good shake to make sure that that's totally mixed. Now we'll take both caps off and test them. So with these testers, it's very important for accuracy that you fill it to that line. It says fluid level there. So uh, if you don't fill it to that, it's not going to be at all accurate. So to squeeze the bubble all the way down before you stick the hose into the coolant. You can actually see it overfilled. So what we'll do, that's okay, we'll just... Squirt it down right to the, the line there. And you can see it's right on minus 37 Celsius or minus 35 Fahrenheit. So that's what we normally have our coolant mixed to here in Canada. So now we'll test the other jug just to confirm. Although it should be the same since uh, we mix them evenly. And you can see it's the same thing there, minus 37 and minus 35 so that's how you check the strength of your coolant okay so here we go just dumping a little bit in just to flush the system out the bottom is still open and the drain pan is still under there there we go Okay guys, we're just uh, putting the plug back in the radiator here. Like I said, you don't need to get them terribly tight, but if you do have weak fingers, maybe just uh, snug it up with a pair of pliers is all. <clears throat> there, that'll be plenty good just with my fingers there. Now it's not a bad idea to just go around and uh, this is why I save my old rags as I go here and just wipe everything up. And that way... Uh, you know if something's leaking or not. If everything's dripping already before you even fill, it's going to be hard to tell if you've got a leak somewhere. Okay, I'll meet you guys back up top and uh, we'll fill it with coolant here. Now these uh, bleeder valves do occasionally seize up, so just put a single drop of 3-in-1 uh, on there. You don't want a whole bunch because you don't want it going into the uh, coolant system. But uh, it shouldn't, just that one drop won't make it in there. And now a little 3 8 ratcheting wrench will actually get down in there just perfectly. You can use a ratchet and an extension and, uh, and do it up here as well. But uh, this is going to be my choice for today. You can see it's turning there. So we'll just make sure it's good and loose. Okay, so now we just have to... Uh, Fill it until it comes out that uh, valve there. So basically when you get air pockets in your cooling system, it's caused by the air getting trapped under the thermostat. That's part of why they put that little weep valve in your thermostat. But that's also what this bleeder valve is for. It allows the air to escape as you're filling the system. So as you're filling the system, 
the liquid you're putting in is displacing air and it's got to go somewhere so it will come out that bleeder but otherwise it would just build up under the thermostat and a lot of it would get trapped air locked the system and then uh, you can actually get hot spots in your engine and your engine can overheat um, basically your water pumps an impeller and it uh, it pumps liquid by drawing liquid. If it doesn't have any liquid within it, it can't draw liquid. If that makes any sense. So uh, if there's an air pocket around your water pump, it, uh, it wouldn't circulate any of the coolant and then your engine would overheat very rapidly. So without further ado, we shall fill this up. Oh, I didn't want to spill, but I did. So I just repositioned you guys so you can see that uh, bleeder valve and you'll see what I mean the there'll be some air bubbles and a little bit of coolant will ooze out a get and we'll just keep going until we get a steady stream out of there so you want to have your drain pan under there you're going to spill a little bit of coolant here you don't want to pour terribly fast just go at a gentle rate that uh, valve's not very big so it can't let a lot of air out at once and this coolant has to find its way through all the fins and little passageways in your cooling system. You can hear the air bubbling up through. So if it just starts bubbling like that, just give it a minute to kind of catch up. You can come over on the other side and squeeze the hose a bit. That helps. It's me squeezing the hose there. Oh, I'm spilling a lot. It's like 2.30 in the morning, so give me a bit of a break, guys. <laughs> I'm all out energy drinks for the night. It's running on pure willpower now. Okay, it will keep going. It should come out the valve here soon. It'll probably take over a gallon to get it out the valve, but... There's one full gallon. Okay, I got a full jug here. I'm trying not to spill. Direct hit. Getting good at this. There you can see it's starting to drip out there, but there's still some air coming out. So we gotta wait for a steady stream. Pretty good. We're just gonna add a bit more and then we'll tighten the valve. Just to make sure. So snug it up good, but don't overdo it. Again, it's it's a uh, taper fit there, so it should seal up quite easily. If it's still weeping, just give it a little more. So now we're going to gently top up the rest of the system. And I'll just squeeze the hose as I go and pour really slow and uh, kind of work the air out. The main thing here is to just pour really slowly. I'm just squeezing the hose. Get that air out. Hey guys, and that's all there is to it. Like, uh, there should be no air in the system now. All the air escapes out that uh, vent there. So, so when I'm squeezing the hose, I'm just, see, I'm just squeezing over here, right on the elbow here. Because there's a bit of a, a low spot here, you'll notice, and what happens is air gets trapped right there. And if you just squeeze right there, it'll push it up through the hose and out there. So, uh, we've got the level right there at the neck and we're going to leave it there and just make sure it's still there in the morning plus check for leaks under the car i have spilled a bit here so i'm going to try and dry it up so i can get a better look at that and of course you want to fill up your reservoir as well to the cold full line now we're we'll get our new radiator cap out here let's just uh wipe out in there where the cap seals really good there we go brand new radiator cap your radiator cap is actually an underrated part of your cooling system uh, when the uh, temperature gets up in your cooling system the pressure will raise in there from the expansion of the liquid and this spring here will um, compress that's why they have a, a pound rating on them 18 pounds of pressure and that spring will compress and allow coolant to bypass into that little hole and into the overflow. And then when the pressure in the radiator drops below 18 PSI, 
it'll vacuum that water back into there. So it's very important that your radiator cap's working up to par. There we go. Nice new Gates cap on there. Okay guys, it's the next day from when I filled the uh, coolant here. So let's just see if the level's still up. And you can see it's actually gone down about half an inch. But uh, I mean that's such a small amount that's just a bubble somewhere. There's uh, There wasn't a single drip under the car overnight. So uh, everything's good. Thermostat sealed up nice and uh, the only thing left to do is bring it up to temperature and check for, for leaks or anything like that. But uh, I'm pretty sure I nailed that. So thanks a lot for watching Matt's Garage. I hope you found the video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourself a great day.